we are going to talk about the most efficient engine is called Carnot engine. So, notice the timeline 1824. So, we talked about in the his, you know uh, history of thermodynamics and all in that we discussed about steam engine coming around 1796 and all that right many other things. But even we talked about Papa's engine around uh, some 1600 some time I do not remember exactly. So, Papa's engine was Papa's di di digester was something where uh, a digester was, was getting heated up it is like a pressure cooker heat and then it was cooling down like the two step process heating and cooling. However, during the industrial revolution time people were trying to make more efficient engines and they did not have the idea of any of the laws of thermodynamics even not even the first law not even zeroth law not, not the second law either people were only concerned about designing efficient engine. I will talk about that you know by then two, two types of engines were already known one is steam engine maybe many more, but majorly important engines were like steam engine by James Watt and uh, the second one was Starling engine. Starling engine came around 8 years before this time, they are going to talk about that. So, steam engine and Starling engines are both called external combustion engine. Our cars are internal combustion engine, you put the fuel inside the car, combustion happens inside and that drives, that heat drives the car. However, for steam engine your uh, combustion happens outside, you, you, you generate the heat outside and that pushes the engine and piston and then it moves. Starling engine is also an external combustion engine and that we can show uh, as an example. However, this Carnot engine were not any real engine, it is a hypothetical engine. Carnot showed that, that this engine will have the maximum efficiency and we are going to see that uh, in a how meaning what is the construction of that engine. It came even after um, uh, after the Starling engine. So, what Carnot did is that okay, he said okay I have to create a cyclic process. So, he created a cyclic process no laws of thermodynamics right now is there. Okay. He created a cyclic process in which just like Papa's engine, but more, little bit more complicated not just heating and cooling, but the process is done in such a way that first step will be an isothermal expansion process from 1 to 2. So, this is this is the diagram that shows that uh, every step what happens and this isothermal ex expansion process means it must be connected to a reservoir having the temperature T 1 and expansion happens remember isothermal expansion you know that in isothermal expansion temperature does not change. If temperature does not change means internal energy does not change which means that, but, but 1 to 2 there is some work done right which means heat is must be getting input to the system. So, the heat comes in during this step that is followed by an adiabatic process from 2 to 3. Since it is an adiabatic process, there is no heat going in or coming out, which means the internal energy of the system is getting converted to the work. And now you know that in internal energy, when it changes, temperature changes. So, the temperature drops from 2 to 3, let us call that at T3 temperature. And at that uh, temperature, now again an isothermal compression is done. Now, in isothermal compression, what happens is that again your uh, internal energy is 0, change is 0 therefore, uh, heat is proportional to the work is it equal to the work and since now work is work done it is now work done on the system and therefore, the heat must be going out of the system. So, let us call that as Q out and let us call that as Q in and then from 4 to 1 is just exactly opposite of 2 to 3 and no heat exchange happens. So, immediately you see the efficiency of this engine will be the work done by heat input which is work done will be q in minus q out by heat input is q in. So, it will be 1 minus q out by q in 
So, this is exactly that kind of engine that we are talking about, is not it? Just, just now with the cyclic process. The circle that I was drawing is to denote a cyclic process, and how to achieve a cyclic process is through this you know combination of isothermal and adiabatic processes. Okay. Now, let us work out <coughs> the efficiency uh, of, uh, of this particular engine and step by step. And all the required uh, formulations are already done in the first law of thermodynamics part, right. So, let us do that. So, for 1 to 2, okay. it is an expansion process and you know that delta u is equal to 0. Therefore, q will be or q 1. So, q 1 equal to minus w and minus w you know as p d v. This we already know going from 1 to 2 and you already know that what is the value of that of this one is right p is nrt by v so minus n r t1 ln v2 by v1 we have already derived the work done for an isothermal process right expansion and contraction we don't have to worry isothermal process uh, uh, final value to initial value minus n r t ln okay. Second step 2 to 3, 2 to 3 q is 0 or uh, we can say q okay, q is 0 fine. So, work done is equal to change in the internal energy okay. and which means it is equal to C V d t. So, T 3 minus T 1 is it understandable? C V d t is the work done. We are not using the complicated adiabatic P V work. It is just very simple by using C V d t formula. We can do that. And another thing we know that since 2 to 3 is an adiabatic process, in adiabatic process there are this formula right. We know that in adiabatic process P 1 V 1 to the power gamma is equal to P 2 V 2 to the power gamma right. And since it is 2 to 3 process let us call it 2 2 3 3 okay. At the same time we know that P V equal to N R T that also we know. Now, if we know that then we can always replace P by N R T by V. So, let us replace that N R T 2 by V 2 into V 2 to the power gamma equal to N R T 3 by V 3 I am just substitu substituting the P V 3 to the power gamma. N R N R cancels. So, T 2 V 2 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T 3 V 3 to the power gamma minus 1. That is another formula of an adiabatic process which means that if I take the ratios of the temperature between two adiabatic processes T 3 by T 2 will be V 2 by V 3 to the power gamma minus 1 correct. This we are going to use. So, therefore, you have just derived this one. So, remember T 3 by T 2 is V 2 by V 3 just the opposite of that to the power gamma minus 1. Now, let us go back to that. So, which means uh, we are going to talk about 3 and 2. So, T 3 by T 1 is going to be V 1 by V 3 to the power gamma minus 1. Okay. Three to four, same as one to two, but just the opposite. So delta u equal to zero. Let's call that q three because that's the step where q changes. Equal to minus w again. See, I'm not changing the you know sign or anything because automatically it will come positive or negative based on this one. Minus w is plus p dv. I'm sorry. It it should have been minus w is always plus p dv. So it is plus n r t, not minus. <coughs> okay. W is by de by definition is minus P dV. So, minus W is plus P dV. So, it is plus N R T <coughs> minus W. So, here it will be N R T 3 L N it is going from 3 to 4. So, V 4 by V 3. Third step is done. Fourth step just opposite of 2 to 3 Q equal to 0 delta U equal to W equal to C V t 1 minus t 4 
uh, another thing is that in the second step 2 to 3 it will be T 3 minus T 2. Of course, we know that T 1 is equal to T 2 and T 3 is equal to T 4 that we know because they are isothermal processes. So, the temperature in 1 and temperature in 2 same and temperature in 3 and temperature in 4 is same right because they are isothermal processes we know that and we know the relation between temperature of T 3 and T 2 and T 4 and T 1. For example, here we can write that T 4 by so, in the second step instead of it will be T 2 not T 1 because we are talking about 2 and 3 that is why. So, that is I have corrected now. So, now T 4 by T 1 is equal to V 1 by V 4 to the power gamma minus 1. We have done all possible all the steps of the Carnot cycle. So, now if we have to calculate the efficiency, we know that this efficiency will be 1 minus q 3 by q 2 correct. Let us put it mod. Why? Because q out is q 3 and q in is q 1. So, we have to calculate q 3 by q 1 then. So, let us calculate that q 3 by q 1 is equal to what is our q 3? We have it somewhere, huh. it is n r t 3 l n v 4 by v 3 and q 1 is n r t 1 l n v 2 by v 1 n r cancels is equal to T 3 by T 1. Now, what is the relation between V 4 and V 3 that we have to see? So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, T T 3 by T 2 is V 2 by V 3 to the power gamma minus 1 and T 1 by T 4 is V 4 by V 1 to the power gamma minus 1. Okay, this I know. Now, we also know that T 1 equal to T 2 and T 3 equal to T 4. So, therefore, we can write same for this one right T 4 by T 1. So, see you see T 4 by T 1 is coming out to be V 2 by V 3 to the power gamma minus 1 and T 1 by T 4 is just the opposite. So, from here we can get T 4 by T 1 is just V 1 by V 4 to the power gamma minus 1. So, from here we get this and from this relation we get that. Now, we are equating then we can equate equation 1 and equation 2 to get V 2 by V 3 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to V 1 by V 4 to the power gamma minus 1. Okay. Are you following? Gamma minus 1 cancels. So, V 2 by V 3 is equal to V 1 by V 4 or V 2 by V 1 is equal to V 3 by V 4. This result we are going to use. So, what was the q 3 by q 1? So, here this q 1 and this is q q 3 right. We, we remember that uh, what was the q right, q was the work done. So, it was n r t 1 l n v 2 by v 1 and oh sorry uh, it was v 4 by v 3. I will just uh, can I use this? Yep, I you can use this. Good. Okay. Q3 by Q1 you are going to do, right? So, what is Q3? N R L N V4 by V3. What is Q1? N R L N V2 by V1. 
NR cancels oh and oh, NR T we have T 3 here and we have T 1 here. So, you see that uh, it is T 3 ln V 4 by V 3. So, I can write minus T 3 ln V 3 by V 4 and I can write T 1 ln V 2 by V 1. Now, you see since V 2 by V 1 is same as V 3 by V 4, ln of that also will be same, which means that ln V 3 by V 4 is equal to ln V 2 by V 1, which is giving us minus T 3 by T 1. So, what do you got finally? I can write here, we got Q 3 by Q 1 is equal to minus T 3 by T 1. Now, what is the significance of this? Uh, one thing I just would like to tell you, when we calculated Q 3 and Q 1 and all, we did not care about the sign, right. We just simply calculated based on initial point to final point. So, which means when you calculate the efficiency of engine eta, efficiency says that work done by heat input, our heat input is Q 1. Work done is what? heat input minus heat output, but heat output is minus only when we take the heat to be positive quantity or modulus of the heat. If we do not take the modulus of the heat, it is simply the overall change in the heat. Since we did not care about the sign at all, it will be Q 1 plus Q 3 by Q 1. There is you know people have confusion at this stage. I would like to tell you that the, the above one, the numerator is such that the overall heat will be less than Q 1, because Q 3 is a negative number. So, we, we are go going to check the overall change in the heat, right. So, change in the heat when you calculate it, we calculate just the heat the way we normally do and, there, and we, it turns out to be something minus something. So, we can say that it is actually Q 1 modulus of Q 1 minus modulus of Q 3 by modulus of Q 1. Okay. So, this so, so, I, so, the point that I would like to tell you is that is the overall change in the heat divided by heat input. And now, we know that since it is Q, Q 1 plus Q 3 by Q 1, which is that means our eta is 1 plus Q 3 by Q 1, which is 1 minus T 3 by T 1. And this is the most important result of the Carnot cycle, that the efficiency of the engine is 1 minus T 3 by T 1. So, I will go back and write that. So, it turns out to be minus and I am going to use a different color to show that eta is basically Q 1 plus Q 3 by Q 1 equal to 1 plus q 3 by q 1 equal to 1 minus t 3 by t 1. And so, what it says this is you know extremely important uh, uh, result of the second law of thermodynamics. Again second law of thermodynamics formally has not come yet. However, Carnot finds that and we are talking about ideal engine, ideal gas engine, which means that we are not talking about all the frictional loss, any other you know because of friction, because of other things, because of uh, design, any losses. We are not talking about anything. We are talking about the most perfect ideal engine possible and that too for an ideal gas system. Even in that, what Carnot find is that you are not going to get efficiency 1, because in order to get efficiency 1, what you have to do? Can you tell me? This is the formula that you get 1 minus T 3 by T 1. Now, how do you get efficiency 1 in this? Correct. If T 3 goes to 0, then your efficiency will go to 1, is not it? Since your efficiency cannot go to 1, T 3 will not be able to go to 0. So, you get one more version of second law of thermodynamics that one cannot attain absolute 0 temperature. Because if you could, you could have made an engine having efficiency 1, 
which could, would have violated the second law of thermodynamics, Kelvin's Planck statement, which would have violated Clausius statement that heat will transfer from low temperature to high temperature spontaneously. You see how well they are connected. So, this remarkable engine, however, is still a hypothetical engine, ideal, which is possible, achievable. So, given, so what it says is that given two temperature reservoirs, the maximum efficiency of an engine. Why are we are saying maximum? Because we are considering an ideal engine, a reversible engine, and uh, reversible engine, uh, uh, and um, ideal and reversible engine. These are the two things we are using it, because of which we are getting maximum efficiency. So, so efficiency can be just lower than that when the temperature differences are the same. In these two temperature differences, the efficiency cannot be higher than this one minus d theta t one. That is what Carnot, you know, got. And here again, we did not come to the second law of thermodynamics as of yet because we, what we have done is just, and Kelvin Planck statement did not come because in 1824 Kelvin was just born, and Clausius was born just two years before 1822. So, Kelvin Planck statement did not come. Kelvin just talked about the efficiency. Okay. Hey, sorry, uh, Carnot just uh, talked about the efficiency of the engine. Kelvin Planck statement did not come because this can be used in Kelvin's statement because this gives you the idea that efficiency cannot be one, but it did not come. Clausius uh, formulated what we formally known uh, as you know entropy and the second law of thermodynamics again from the Carnot cycle itself. So, from the Carnot cycle we can observe one particular thing and that is that you saw what was happening there are four steps in the cycle it is a cyclic process and there were four steps in the cycle two isothermal and two adiabatic steps right. Now, if you see that your overall change in the heat was q 1 plus q 3 and that is not equal to 0, because obviously q 1 modulus of q 1 is larger than modulus of q 3 right, because some work is being done. However, when you do q 1 by v t 1 and q 2 by v t 2, what you get? Do you remember that? Uh, so, if let us let us calculate that q 1 plus so, what is Q1? Again, I remind you, Q1 is nR T1 ln V2 by V1 by T1, and Q2 by T2 is nR T3 ln. Uh, it was uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, V4 by V1 by T3. n r but we already sh showed that v 2 by v 1 sorry v 3 it will be because you are going from 3 to 4. So, this will be 3 right. So, it is just simply the, the way we defined it, but I just remind you that v 2 by v 1 was v 3 by v 4 ln of v 2 by v 1 is ln of v 3 by v 4 or minus ln of v 4 by v 3, which means I can just substitute this equation here minus ln of v 4 by v 3 plus ln of v 4 by v 3 and we are going to get a 0. So, you see that <coughs> for a cyclic process when you do q 1 by t 1. So, now in general for a cyclic process here we have like two steps only q 1 by t 1 plus q 3 by t 3 is equal to 0. So, in general for you know cyclic process having more number of such steps one can write that q i by t i. However, the condition is that for reversible processes, right? Because Carnot cycle is all about reversible processes. Remember, we uh, we have not discussed any irreversible uh, processes as of yet. So, all the work done, all you know, in as isothermal or adiabatic or wherever, we only talked about reversible processes. For reversible process, we will calculate Q1 by T1 and sum over. 
for you know the whole the cy cyclic steps like this this i should be such that it it makes a cy cycle then it's turning out to be zero now which means that we if we extend it to infinitesimal small small steps then sum becomes integration and since we are talking about a cyclic process we denote by a cycle and we write d q reversible by t going to be 0. Okay. So, now what we saw here is that and what are the what are the uh, properties that in a cycle become 0? Uh, we discussed about that last time that which quantities if you you know do you know go in a cycle and come back to the same point will be equal to 0 do you remember? Internal energy of course, but what are those class of quantities? class of variables we said as you know particular name for that right state function. So, state function are those which does not depend on the path. So, we whatever you do if you come back to the po same point it will have the same value and therefore, when you integrate over that and come back to the same point will get 0. So, now we see that a new state function has emerged Clausius saw that a new state function has emerged d q by t. So, it must be very special because state functions are you know special because they they are invariant to all those changes. So, this special function this new quantity he defined as entropy. So, the definition of entropy is d s change in entropy is equal to d q reversible do not forget any of this particular thing that I am saying d q reversible by t it is not d q by t it is d q reversible by t. <coughs> so, when you go from one step 1 to 2 along a reversible path whatever changes of q will happen divide by the temperature and integrate to 1 to 2 you are going to get the change in entropy. Trope, trope is transformation. So, he introduced that term as you know transformation. So, remember so the, the, the definition of entropy. <coughs> came from <coughs> Carnot cycle, but, uh, but uh, Clausius gave that definition of entropy. So, we, we only we have seen that like q, somehow the q was path function you see q is not a state function, but by dividing by t is called sometimes integration factor also. So, sometimes integrating factor sometimes you know you have done some integration with some integrating factor right makes it easier you know gives you a differential that is easy to different you know integrate. So, the t works as an integrating factor. So, somehow this quantity came out to be something very unique and it was called as entropy. Okay. So, now that is there. So, we, we now we have uh, now uh, defined the definite you know entropy definition. So, it is something that says that okay, change in the uh, heat in a reversible manner divided by t is the change in entropy an easy way to understand uh, this conversion of uh, like uh, heat to work and all by using T s diagram rather than a P v diagram. So, that is very simple at least for the Carnot's process. So, what we saw in the Carnot cycle is that first step is an isothermal then an adiabatic expansion then an isothermal compression then an adiabatic compression. Now, what will happen if we do convert the same thing in a T s diagram you will you will find that the T s diagram is very easy to <coughs> get the change in the heat and other things uh, and you know work done out of that and all. So, in 1 to 2 step temperature does not change right because in isothermal process however, heat comes in. So, Q changes and it is positive or negative it comes to the system. So, therefore, must be positive so, temperature remains same, but entropy increases. Second to third step heat reversible heat change is 0. So, entropy is 0, but temperature goes down is not it. Third step is exactly reverse entropy decreases, but by the same amount and you know entropy comes to the same it has to come to the same value right and then there is no en entropy change and it comes back. So, you see the amount of heat 
is different between 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. However, the entropy changes is same because the T balances. So, this is a typical T s diagram and from the T s diagram you can actually get the full overall heat is the area under the curve of 1 to line. I uh, will just denote that by some green color and the work done is what is enclosed within the rectangle. So, this much work only you are getting out of the whole thing and this is the loss this part which I am going to show in this color this is the loss uh, because we are not getting that the input loss in, in the efficiency. For example, we are not getting the entire see you ask the question right why we are not getting what prevents us to get the entire amount of uh, heat to work this is the heat that is lost this heat we are it is not being able to convert to work because we, we took the whole whole uh, area under this line. However, we are only getting this much which means the other thing is lost lost to the environment. Okay. So, we will we'll come back to that again that uh, and we see the total change of entropy of the system remains 0.